Okay. All right, everybody. Welcome to um, this week's, um, I guess, coaching webinar. I am excited about this bonus webinar that we are doing here for you guys, uh, this Q&A. And let me um, get my webcam here so you guys can see me. How's everybody doing? Let me... Uh, How's um, g give me some updates. How's your homework uh, coming along? And whether or not you, um, you got a lot of questions for me today. Mark said, uh, May days are off. <laughs> That's right. May is over. Okay. Wow, Joe already have a question for me. That's quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to I want to get some updates on you guys. Um, who have done their homework? How did it go? What's going on with that? Oh, and thank you so much, y'all, for for leaving all those awesome testimonials. I don't know if you guys had a chance to go through and read them from uh, from your colleagues there, but uh, the uh, the response, the feedback I've been getting has been just um, off the chart, off the chart. And so I want to thank you so much for your kind words, and uh, thank you so much for your feedback. All right. Uh, let me see here. So, um, so yeah, so who, um, who has feedback that they want to share? Anybody? No? Man, you guys just want to get into business right away, huh? <laughs> just want to right, get your questions ready for sure. But um, I want to hear feedback. How's uh, how's your feedback? How has how was your homework? How was um, you know what have you implemented so far? How you like it? Not like it? Anybody? All right, so nobody. Nobody's making any comments. Either that or my computer's frozen, one of them. I don't think it is. But um, I, since none of you are answering to that, I will go ahead and uh, get started here. Um, we still have a few more slots left for the uh, uh, for the audio mentorship program. So if you want to apply for that, go to judios.com forward slash audio mentor. Judios.com forward slash audio mentor for that. Okay. Okay. Rosemary said, "I really liked the last webinar. It taught me a lot of new ideas. That's good." Um, one ask uh, Tim, can you show a deal from the beginning to end? Okay. Um, homework has been very helpful in helping us take action. Um, still working on getting to Joe said uh, still work on getting secure lenders. Okay. Right. So that's good. Uh, I'm not going to have to, um, I, I didn't prepare a, uh, a case study uh, to show you guys the deal from the beginning to the end, but um, if you were on, um, um, I mean, you know, the, the only thing I really can show you at the end is the HUD. Uh, if you were on the webinar we did last uh, last Thursday, where I went through from, from when we made the offer to the contract that we have for the buyer, so the only thing that I would show you at the end would be the HUD, the closing HUD between uh, be, you know, between us and the seller and us and the buyer. So there's really nothing more to the end of that than that. The rest of the documents are are the documents that the title company will prepare and you have to sign. And so uh, I won't be able to show you like all, all of the details, the the because the, um, all of those things that the title you know things that the title company will prepare like the warranty deeds. And the deed of trust, and you know the disclosures, and all of those documents. If you ever bought a home, you filled out a bunch of documents. That's what uh, uh, 
that's what you would have. Okay. So you know, uh, check the webinar I did last Thursday. That should give you a pretty good idea, Juan. Uh, Mark asked, "Do you have a mind map of the deal?" What do you mean, Mark? I'm not sure. Like you want to know what happened at first, the second, and third, and so on. I'm not sure if I'm clear on your question there. Okay. Um, I sort of did. I sort of did that um, process last um, last last Thursday. Was that not clear enough? I mean, or do you want to see it in a? Um, uh, you you want to see it in a um, um, what uh, in a mind map format? Because last week I showed that in the PowerPoint format. You know the closing process from the time you make an offer, the time you get in the contract, the time you sell the house, um, and um, the closing process between you and the buyer. Do you remember that? Okay. All right, Joe asked, um, um, Joe asked, um, should we use those automated offers blasters for REOs? Should the realtors make the offer for us? Is there any way to avoid eliminate, eliminate giving a deposit? Number one, you should not use those automated offers on REOs because you'll you, um, you know, REOs is a very relationship intensive business, and so you've got to build a relationship with these REO listing agents. And yes, the realtor should make an offer for us, okay? They, either the listing realtor or a realtor on the listing um, realtor's team. You know, either, either they themselves or somebody on their team needs to make an offer for us. Is there any way to avoid or eliminate giving a deposit? No, there's no way to avoid or eliminate that. However, once you you know once you uh, have done some deals with them and build some business, uh, 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 build a relationship with them, and a lot of them will will not even ask about your deposit. They, I mean, you're gonna write it in the contract, and they assume that you have it, but they won't even ask about it. And then when closing comes, and you're like, oh, okay, well, we forgot, so. They just deduct it out uh, from the closing from there. And also, too, a lot of time, by the time that you need to give your deposit, you already have a deposit from your buyer. So technically, you can use your buyer's money to make that deposit. Okay. Um, if you don't have a buyer fast enough, then you just need to make your own deposit. And then you know, in a few days, when you do have your, uh, the deposit from your buyer, then that replenish your money. Ted, Ted, I may have a deal this week due to your training. Ted, awesome, Ted. Congratulations, buddy. I like that. Good for you. Nam asks, uh, should we rely on real to CMA report as the true valuation comparison tool? Yes. You should. The uh, you know the comps from the the, uh, the realtor CMA is going to be what the appraisal is the appraiser is going to use to determine the value, and so that's the best comp. Any other comps is just to give you an idea, but once you get into the deal, you really do need a uh, an actual comp from the MOS. Um, Sean asked, um, "Hi Tim." Uh, where did you say the replays are? My assistant should have sent you the replay last, um, or sent it already. If not, uh, I'll ask him to send it to you guys again. But he should have sent it in, in an email. Check your spam box. It might have went there. Because there was like four links on there, so it might have went to your spam box. So check there. Rosemary asks you, if you are flipping to an end buyer, what happens to uh, that happens to be using an FHA loan? How do you get around? How do you get past the seasoning issues? You can't. Uh, you shouldn't be. You, you shouldn't be doing these deals and selling it to FHA buyers. These are yours. You should just sell it to cash buyers. There's no other way around it. Uh, 
Uh, let me see here. Ted asks, how do I get money from my buyer before closing so that I use their money for the purchase? Do I sell the LLC first even though there's no property in it? Yes, that is correct. And of course, your buyer has to trust you because they're there at closing. You're going to meet up with them and like, you know, two minutes before you get into the title company and close, uh, then that's when you and your buyer do, their do the transaction. Uh, but um, when you sell an LLC, your buyer is going to come in and close, not you. So you don't need, you know, you don't need to. So once you sell your LLC, your buyer is going to come in, and you, you're going to come in with your buyer to introduce your buyer to the title company. But you are not the one who has to sign off the paperwork yourself. Okay. Uh, Julie asks, uh, what kind of contract do I need between my private lenders and myself? The um, oh wow. It's funny, two people ask the same question at the same time. Greg also asks, what kind of paperwork do you need to sign up private lenders? Or where can I get it? Um, you are going to find a, either the title company themselves or a local, uh, or a local uh, uh, real estate attorney is going to have to prepare that document. It's called the deed of trust, the, the warranty deed, the deed of trust, the, um, the promissory note. Yeah, the, those are not something that you can those are not something that you can use as a blank one. It's better if you have an attorney or a title company to draft those for you, okay? And a lot of private lenders will not be comfortable with you filling out your own forms like that. Um, and then um, <clears throat> what uh, yeah, th those are the three main forms, right? So the warranty deed, deed of trust, and uh, promissory note. If you're in a mortgage state, then it will be a mortgage instead of a instead of a deed of trust. Okay. And like I said, either your attorney or the title company will prepare those for you. So let me ask, hi, you mentioned in an earlier session in one way to get MLS access, offer to pay the RE agent MLS dues. Do you have any idea what the MLS dues are? It's a it, it it varies from from city to city. You know, every MLS um, uh, yeah, every MLS association, every realtor association in the local market area will have different pricing. But generally speaking, they are somewhere between you know they are somewhere between um, three you know three hundred to eight hundred dollars a, a a year. So some, you know, somewhere between that. Uh, some of them are more expensive, some are cheaper. I think here in Houston is $800 a year, I think. All right, um, I, here, here's what I'm gonna do here. Yeah. I'm gonna do this for you guys so you guys can see the flow from the beginning to the end here, okay? I O deal flow. All right, so first is um, investor, investor makes offer to listing agent, okay? Investing agent. Um, you know, it, it might take me a while if I do that. I can just go back here. How about this? Let me uh, let me go down here, and somebody else can mind map this out. Because if I mind map, it might take a little bit longer. All right, so um, uh, okay, let me, before I go that, uh, Dale asked, uh, during the last webinar, a question was raised that confused me. Are we to co-op multiple buyers to make a deal work? I had the understanding that one buyer per deal. Oh, that person was asking about, um, about uh, co-oping multiple lenders, multiple private lenders to make the deal work. 
not uh, not multiple buyers. But you you, you can co-opt multiple buyers to to make the deal work if if the buyers are partnering with each other in that deal. Yeah, certainly. They'll ask, if we co-op buyers, how do we pay them off? And what is the typical payoff percentage? I don't understand that question, Dale. All right, um, let me see. Jerry has some question here. Um, I know it depends on the deal, but how do the numbers work out with 6% to the IO agent and 2% to the private lender? How do we get ten thousand dollars on the deal? Number one, uh, the six percent to the IO agent is paid by the by the bank, not by us. Okay, so we pay the two percent to the private lender off of our ten thousand dollar deal. Two percent of how much we 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 borrow. So um, so if we borrow fifty thousand, then that would be two uh, percent would be a thousand dollars. Okay. Okay, does the chicken or the egg come first? Meaning, is it best to bid on properties your buyers want or to go after great deals and sell it to your buyers list or both? You, you, you have to know what your buyers want. You have to know what type of properties they're buying, where they're buying, uh, you know, about how much they're willing to pay for it. So you have to have a good idea and then uh, you go and find great deals because the definition of a great deal, uh, the definition of a good deal is a deal that a buyer would be willing to pay for, uh, the buyer would be willing to buy. If you're just trying to find great deals and have no clue, have no idea whether anybody would buy it, then that might not be a great deal at all. Okay, and so you know, so yeah. <laughs> So that means that um, you know that means that the egg does come first. However, you would have to know what kind of chicken you want, so that way you are getting the egg that would produce you the kind of chicken that you want. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, where can I find the financial docs for my private lender that has the correct verbiage specific to him participation in the deal? Um, like I said, the um, you know the, the the attorney will will draft up that document. Okay, you just need to agree on the term, and then the the attorney or the uh, title company, based on the term that you agreed on, will draw will draw up that document for you. Um, do title companies still double close? Would would you briefly cover the process of double closing audio flips? Depending on title companies, and we covered this last week already, but I'll I'll, I'll touch up I'll, I'll touch on this again a little bit. Uh, you know, most title companies will not let you do a back to back closing. Some title companies uh, some title companies will as long as you fund your first transaction. So you have to find one that is willing to do it, but most are not. Um, and so a lot of time what you're going to find is that you have to close with the first transaction, wait a couple of days, uh, and then close again on your second transaction. And so sometimes, you know, a double closing don't necessarily happen on the same day anymore. And like I said, you, you just have to search the title company and, and see if they're willing to do it, um, you know, for, you know, we we have a title company here in Houston that is willing to do it on REOs, uh, that um, that willing to double close it on the same day uh, for 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 the REO as as you know as soon as they get an email from the from the from the uh, bank's title company that um, you know, that the the deed is signed and they have a recording number, then then this title company would be willing to double close it on that same day. But remember, we are dealing with two different title companies here. The bank's title company will not will not ever double close for you. So you do need to have your own title company who is willing to to 
you know, to believe and relied on the bank's title company's um, documents and signature and recording. And once the bank's documents, you know, notify your title company that uh, that the deed has been recorded, then that's when your title company can then uh, proceed with the closing between you and your buyer. Okay. Uh, they'll ask, uh, if we call up lenders, how do we pay them off? What is the typical payoff percentage? Well, each lender is going to get five percent, uh, get two percent of whatever they they they, um, they loan to you. So if you have five lenders, each loan you a thousand dollars, then that means that each lender will get two hundred bucks out of that. Right. Um, yeah, five lenders each loan you ten thousand dollars, so that means each of them will, will get uh, two hundred dollars. Rosemary asks, is it possible to find the audio and get your buyer to enter into a contract with the bank and simply pay an option fee to you? Now, well, you can't use options on REO, but your buyers can pay you a fee outside of closing and get into the contract with the bank. It's very difficult to do unless you have a, uh, unless you have a buyer that you trust because and the buyer has to trust you as well. But if you don't, if you don't yet have a contract with the bank, then I mean, technically, you don't really have the right to sell it. And so, you know, you must have a working relationship with the buyers who is okay with you making a profit, even though you don't even have a contract with the bank. RC asks, uh, when evaluating sold comps to calculate average dollar per square foot, are we including all types of sales in the calculation? For example, do you include other cash sales to investors from banks, retail sales, owner occupants, etc.? You want to only find retail comps. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The only time when you would use um, a cash comps is if you just don't have any retail comps. And so you would use cash comps to find out what is the uh, asset's value, but uh, you know, and it also depends on what your buyer is going to do with it. If your buyer is going to buy and hold on to it, and they don't have any plan to refinance, then uh, then then yeah, you can just give them the cash comp. But if your buyer is planning to refinance the property, that means that they need to have um, you know they they need to have retail comps. To be able to support the value that they're trying to refinance for, and so it's best if you um, use retail comps. So in general, generally speaking, just re just use retail comps. Okay. Uh, Sean asks, uh, since these are cash buyers, can they just buy the entity like an LLC or a trust? The answer is yes, Sean. We talked a lot about that last uh, Thursday. Julie asks, uh, do the investors I'm using on a deal need to supply proof of funds to bank? i assuming you're talking about private lenders. Well, you know, for, for you, when you make the offer and you supply the proof of funds, you can just you, um, you know, log into the members area of dodeals.com and click on uh, due deals cash funding, and then you can apply for the uh, proof of funds letter that way. But uh, you certainly can get a proof of funds letter from your lenders as well. RC asks, when evaluating sold comps to calculate average dollar per Oh, did I already answer that question? Yeah. I think you, you asked that question twice, RC. <laughs> All right. Uh, Edwin asks, uh, Tim, do you recommend nationwide title companies to use a local? I recommend local. If you can't find a local one and you have to use a national one, then that's fine, but I do recommend local. Edwin asks, also, what are the minimum proof of funds that studio start with? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't think there is a minimum. It can be as little as you want. Ted asks, if I sell my cash buyer the LLC before closing, do I need another title company or just the banks? You don't need another title company because selling an LLC, it's just between you and, and the buyer. So that you don't need to involve a bank. You don't need to involve a title company. 
I mean, you're selling your stocks or, you know, in, in, in that uh, company. You're selling your ownership in there. Um, and so, so yeah, you don't, it's just a, uh, a private transaction, a private property transaction. And Riley, North Carolina, it seems that nearly all REO property is priced at about 80% of tax value. Should we wait for the properties that have been on the market enough to be reduced in price? Also, a big percentage of REOs in this area are considerably more than low-end value property. Uh, some upwards to 300000 and more. Should we look only for the low-end properties to wholesale? Yeah, wholesale, you're looking for cash buyers. And so it, it will have to be a, on a you know, lower end, your moderate income to lower income area. All right, so, um, okay, Mark, I'm going to go through this closing process, and I'm going to volunteer, uh, volunteer you to, uh, to drop the mind map for this, okay, if you want to do that. So here's the process. Okay, so the first thing first is you're going to make an offer to um, to, to, to the endorse the agent, okay? And then the agent is going to prepare the contract and send it to you. And you're going to sign it, and you're going to send it back along with your proof of funds, and that's what the agent is going to then send it to the bank. And whether or not the bank's accepted, if the bank's accepted and sign it, then um, once the bank signs it, the agents will let you know that uh, the off your offer was accepted, and the agent would then send that contract over to the title company, and your job is to send in your earnest money to the title company. Okay, so you got that part so far. Okay, that's the beginning of the deal. Pretty simple. And so once um, you know once that happens, then you are going to find a buyer and get the contract signed with that buyer. And then the buyer is going to give you the earnest money, and you're going to send your contract between you and the buyer to the title company. And then whenever that closing happens, then that's when you close. Okay, and so you're going to close at either a title company or an attorney's office. Um, chosen by the bank for your transaction between you and the bank. And if the title company is out of town, you can request for a courtesy closing where, you know, where you, they will send the documents to your title company and then you just come to your title company and send it, sign it and then your title company can then send it off to, uh, to, to the bank's title company. But everything must go through the bank's title company. And Mark, you got that so far? Mark Bergstrom? I think you're the only Mark on this call right now. Let me check. Yep. <laughs> All right. And ask, uh, in what cases does the buyer pay you outside of escrow? Is it on the HUD? Is it on the HUD one? Um, in, um, it seems like some of you guys were not, must have not been on the call that I did last Thursday or something. But um, if you haven't, make sure you watch the replay on that where I go through different types of closings. So like when you know, when, when you sell an LLC, when you sell a DBA, when you're selling a land trust, uh, these are all the different times that uh, that you're going to be paid outside of closing and it will not be included on the HUD. Um, and, um, yeah, or when, when you do an assignment outside of the closing, too, you can also do that. Um, Alan, I see you put three questions, but then I don't see any questions. I assume you're still typing them. 
Okay, Joel asks, is it not better to use vesting to be determined at closing in post with our buyers? It doesn't always work that way, Joel. Uh, not, not all agents and not all banks would agree to that. They, they require that you have, you know, you, you have a name now. And so, 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 you know, yeah, it's not consistently that you can do that. Julie asks, have you purchased any duplexes or fourplexes as audio, audio flip? If so, what, what issues are there that are different from single family homes? Well, here in the state of Texas, um, anything from one to four is considered as the same as single family home. So if it's if it's a single family, uh, um, it's it's called one to four family, you know, contract. And so if it's if it's a, a single family home or a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex, those are the, the the process for that is all the same. Only when it's five. Um, Five units or more, then that falls into the commercial. And so then, then, then that would be a little bit different. But you know, the yeah, the, the, as far as the issues are they any different? The answer is no. There, there shouldn't be any difference. Even if it's five units, I mean, now you you, you you're closing a, a, a commercial property now, but uh, the process should be the same, pretty much. Ted asks, would the courtesy closing be done before or after the bank? Well, I'm a, well, you know, you don't even need to go to the bank to do this. But if you do decide to go to the bank, so that way you close your first transaction first, then I guess um, to, to close the, the sale of the LLC first, then you would, you would do the courtesy closing after you're done. Okay? After you sold your LLC to your buyer is when your buyer is going to come in and sign the paperwork. Uh, so, the, the, are you are you guys pretty clear now on on the uh, on the um, the beginning to the end of what happens with uh, with these deals? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll leave it up here so you guys can you know write it in. I guess write it down. I guess. Crystal asked, "Do we have to have an LLC in order to do deal?" To do the deal with the bank, the answer is no. You don't have to have an LLC. You can do it under your own name. Uh, it's just recommended that you do it under a company's name, but you don't. Yeah, you don't have to. Lewis asks, do you have to have an LLC set up to use transactional funding for deals? Yes, if you're using a transactional funding lender. No, if you're using a a, uh, a private money lender. However, um, you do need to have an LLC or a company if you're, you know, if you're planning to pay the private lender two percent, because two percent that would mean twenty four percent for a year. So if they loan it to you as an individual, they can get in trouble with the usury law. And so, uh, so but if they loan it to you as a company, then then they don't have to worry about that. And so it's best if you do use a company, whether it's an LLC or a C Corp. Um, they ask, I was late logging in. Are we supposed to ask your top three questions now? Yep. You can ask as many questions as you want, really. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Okay, Alan asks, uh, lawyers are based in uh, Massachusetts. Can I use my lawyer to hold the earner's money? Where, how to do, how do you find good lawyer to use with RE investors? Where, how do you find a good title company? Well, whatever market area that you're in, just um, you, you can ask. You can ask other real estate investors in town. You know, for referrals of investor-friendly title company, as well as uh, as well as um, uh, investor-friendly 
uh, real estate attorney. Or you can call around and ask them if they are, you know, if they're, you know, if, um, if they are familiar with back-to-back -back closing, if they're familiar with assignments. If they are, then, then that means that they are, they're pretty, uh, uh, they should be investor friendly. Rose, may I ask, uh, in North Carolina and South Carolina where I work, you can't add anyone's name to the contract. The bank will have to approve it. Can you explain what you mean? Um, yes, the bank will have to approve it whenever you add a name to the contract. I'm not saying that the bank doesn't have to approve it, but adding a name to a contract and getting them to approve it is much easier than changing the name. And I think I, it sounds to me too, Rosemary, you kind of you kind of confuse some of this REO stuff with short sales. You know, the way we do it with, uh, with IOs is different from the way we do things with short sales. Okay. Um, Dale said, clear as mud. It will take some time to sink in. <laughs> but then just, Dale, have you ever bought a property before? Like to your own personal residence or anything like that? I mean, the process is not that much different. Okay, Aussie ask, um, can we do this all your flipping part time if you have a full time job? You may not be able to take or make calls while at work during business hours. Well, yeah, you can't do all yours without, uh, without being able to answer your, your, your calls during business hours because business hours is the only time that these IO agents would work. This is not the same as you know homeowners where you can call them in the evening, you can call them in the morning with these IO agents. They only work during business hours, so you have to work when they are working. And you got to be able to make you have you have to be able to look at these properties pretty fast because if you don't, they're going to go away. I mean. You know, we have cases where the agent tells us, you know, this is a good property you should look into, and then we, we delay it for like an hour because we didn't have enough time to go out there and look at it, and, and an hour later when we call them back and they'll tell us, oh, the property's already under contract. So you have to act really quick, and so you do have to be working doing business hours. Bruce asked, um, when you use multiple private money lenders on one deal, do you use an LLC or partnership? Um, you know, um, yeah. You can use you, know, you 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 can use an LLC, and you can just um, depending on how many pri uh, private lenders that you uh, that you are using on the deal. But uh, but yeah, you can make each one of them. Have, you know, have a certain amount of, um, of um, uh, to get stock in that LLC, or you can just set, write a separate agreement on. Uh, you, know, you can just write a separate agreement that forms the partnership for that specific deal. Okay, for that specific deal, but you can also use a land trust, and then the beneficiary interest of that land trust could then explain how much each person is going to get. So you don't need to form like an LP, you know, limited partnership, like a formal one to, uh, to be able to do it. All of these questions are great questions, y'all. All right, so Jerry asked, when making an offer, uh, how would one determine the best price point to begin negotiation? You determine the best price point based on you know what you think your buyer is willing to pay for that property, and minus maybe uh, you know ten to fifteen thousand dollars, because you you want you know you want to have ten to fifteen thousand dollars margin in it for you, uh, for your profit, and so you gotta get a really good feel what your how much your buyers might be willing to pay for it. Um, yeah, Dale, if you uh, if you already bought properties before and you closed on them before, then just think about the process that you went through, right? So first you made an offer on the property, 
Okay, and then you prepare that contract and you submit that to the title company, right? And then, um, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, once you have both parties sign the, you know, sign the contract, you submit that to the title company, and then you just wait and show up for closing, and then you sign off the closing, and there you have it. That's your deal. <laughs> Let me see here. Um, Julie asks, if you are getting transactional funding and need an LLC, but aren't planning to sell that LLC to the cash buyer, what name would you use on the A to B purchase, the LLC or my personal name? Uh, you have to use the LLC. You have to use whatever name that you're going to be closing under. They'll ask, uh, what type of due diligence is required after getting the property under contract for your properties? I'm not sure what you mean. Like inspecting the property? The banks will give you seven days to inspect the properties. Um, and then, uh, you know, the title company is going to clear up all of the title work and stuff. So. When, when you close with the bank, uh, you know, whatever is owed on back taxes or anything like that, 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 that will be paid off by the bank side. So you don't, really don't need to do any other due diligence other than inspecting the property and making sure that uh, it's, a, uh, you know, it's a good deal. It doesn't need more repairs than you thought. And of course, you also have to run the comps to know what the value of the property is. James asks, can you explain cash to new loan versus cash or other cash to scenarios? I have no idea what you're talking about, James. What does cash to new loan mean? Like you close cash between you and the, and the seller, the bank, and then you sell to your buyer and buyer is getting a new loan? Is that what you mean? John asks, Tim, I totally understand the importance of learning these techniques in one's own local market. However, I aspire to do audio flipping in out-of-state markets as well. After I have them some local, have some local experience, how could I go about getting involved in other markets uh, virtually? Yeah, once you do some deals in your local market area, then you would be able to know how to apply what you do in your local market area to any market you want. For example, if I want to do deals in um, in California or, or, or in Florida or anywhere, then all, all I have to do is um, you know get on the phone, find a real estate agent that is willing to be my you know person on the ground, and uh, and so you know I'll still you know I'll I'll, um, I'll still be handling the relationship with the audio listing agents. And, and whoever I have on the ground will be the person that will take pictures for me, go find out what the, uh, you know, find out what the value of the property is, find out what, you know, what kind of repairs it needs. And, um, and then we'll, you know, we'll, um, we'll meet up with the buyers um, to, um, uh, you know, meet up with the buyers to, um, to um, get the contract signed and get earnest money and all of that. So you just need somebody on the ground but, uh, but yeah, you don't need to necessarily have to be on the ground. Okay, Lois asks, when you use private money lenders on a deal, do you pay them the amount more plus the interest upon closing the deal? I thought private money lenders want to lend for longer periods of time to make more interest on their money instead of lending it for 30 to 45 days. They do want to lend on a longer period of time, but because we offering them two percent for uh, you know for uh, uh, two yeah two two percent uh, on top of um, you know on top of whatever we um, we we uh, we borrow from them, so therefore it makes it worthwhile for them because normally it would take them two months to get two percent interest. And so, you know, so it's kind of like it's kind of like loaning it to to us uh, with a two uh, loaning us to us for 30 days or less, but with a two month minimum. 
which will bring them to the 2%. Crystal asks, if we don't have a cash buy within seven days, the banks give us the inspection to inspect the property. How do we get out of that deal before closing? You can go back and renegotiate with the bank and says, oh, the, the house needs a lot more repairs than I thought. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm still, I, I still want to go forward with it. However, I would have to, uh, you know, I, I would have to make you an offer of this amount. Okay. And so, you know, so you use the repairs to, um, to, to try to renegotiate them on the price. Um, Ted asked, will you send us a replay of this Q&A? Um, gosh, you guys want replay for everything. <laughs> yes, I will send you guys the replay for this Q&A. <laughs> All right, so Dale asked, is it a good idea to use a personal self-directed IRA in conjunction with other private lenders? Well, you can't loan on your own deals. so. I mean, if you are the one making offers, um, you can make, you know, it could be your self-directed IRA that's the one that's making offers and be the buyer. And, you know, the profit will go back to the IRA, but not you as being the, uh, I, uh, the, the buyer and, uh, and your, you know, your, your IRA as being the lender. James asked, um, that is what the IO agent listings say, cash to new loan, et cetera. You know, I really don't understand what that person meant, cash to new loan. I have no idea. I assume that they meant that you can buy the house any, time, any way you want, whether you want to buy it with cash or buy it with a new loan or anything in between, probably. I don't know. Julie asked, um, what name do you put on the LLC, the street address, or what? Oh, I just named a generic uh, LLC, like uh, ALS is um, um, you know, RMTM Management uh, 100, RMTM Management 101, RMTM Management 102. Uh, so it doesn't have to be an address name. Uh, Catalina said, good evening, Tim. I'm sorry I'm late, but thank you very much for this opportunity to attend the webinar. Well, I am planning to end the webinar in nine more, in eight more minutes, so <laughs> you are pretty late. <laughs> okay. Christopher asked, uh, if we have a cash retail buyer looking for a property, won't the profit be much greater? Any problems with this? The answer is no, no problem, and yes, your profit would be much greater. So if you can find cash retail buyers, that's awesome. It's good news. Now I'm asked, uh, if you bought a house from MOS, foreclosure, or your listing, the sales price is known to everyone. The buyer will know your cost when you resell. Any concern with this? Nope, not at all. And um, there are times when the price that we sell is higher than what's listed on the MLS, and um, the buyers will still be okay with that because you already have it under contract. It's not like they can do anything about it. Yeah, so they don't care. Joe asked, um, on a present deal, the agent recommended an offer a little higher than listing 26k because they go quick. What do you think? Value was over 180,000. How much is the listing price? You know, all of the agents will advise you to offer higher than listing, but a lot of them they they are just playing balls, and so it depends. As, um, you know, you 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 offer what you are willing to pay for the property, regardless what the listing is. So, for example, we had a property that we offer higher than what was listing, is because we we are willing to pay higher than what it's listing, what it's listed for. So, you know, so it all depends. I, um, you know, we don't care as much about what the listing price is. 
we care more about what we're willing to offer for that property, what we're willing to pay for that property. Joe said um, 24000 listing price, and it's worth 180000 What's wrong with it? How much repairs does it have? Yeah, and, and I mean, if that's the case, I would be offering a higher than the listing price, for sure. Um, Dale asked, can you recommend a website to structure a low-cost LLC to use the LLC to sell to the buyer and then buy back? Is the LLC bought back by a quick claim deed? Um, what? No, not a quick claim deed. Um, the um, well, number one, you know, LLC it's state specific, so you gotta find out. Um, you you gotta find out you know, how to do it in your state and you just learn how to do it yourself or you can use a, a third party company like if you go on Google and search for, you know, um, filing LLC or corporation, you have companies like mycorporation.com that, that will charge a fee to, um, uh, to, to file those for you. But I would advise you to learn how to file it yourself, save you a little bit of money there. Because following an LLC is pretty easy, so uh, try try to do that. But it's state specific, and when you buy it back, you know they'll 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 just um, tell you back the ownership, um, and they'll they'll deed the property out out of the LLC into whatever name that they want to deed it to. And um, here in Texas, you can't use quick claim deed. Uh, title companies won't accept that, so you would have to deed it out using a warranty deed. But I know, like in you know, in Florida, they they're still using quick claim deed. So it, it depends depends on um, on your city on your state. JMS, can you give us some types of conditions that we can use to explain why we want to include the vesting to be determined at closed clause in our audio contract? You would tell the real estate agent that um, you know you you uh, you buy houses and sometimes you fix them up and resell them. Sometimes you sell them as is. Sometimes you buy and rent them. Uh, and so you are not sure, and you have several different companies, and you are not sure. Uh, which company you're going to close it under and, and whether you're going to buy and hold or buy and resell. And you're not going to decide that until it comes closer to closing, um, you know, whichever company, yeah, because you, cause you, you know, your money in one company might be tied up with another property. And so that's that's how you would explain it to them to, uh, to use the vesting to be determined at closing. Edwin said, uh, so based on market past five to six months are best to get lower price? The answer is yes, Edwin. But sometimes you can get them, you know, lower the price uh, significantly, even after with just 30 days. Depends. Julie asked, so you offer higher just to get the offer in, and then you go back and say you found out you need it less because of expenses on property, correct? The answer is no, Julie. Uh, we only make offers that we are willing to pay for the property. The only time that we go back to them and says there's too much repairs, is uh, the only time when we do that is if we can't find a buyer. We don't do we don't do that every time. So it's um, it's not often that we do that. We only do that as a last resort. We normally make offers that we are willing to buy and that we are going to have a buyer for. But sometimes we make mistakes and we can't find a buyer. So we then go back and renegotiate. All right, Bruce asks, uh, do you have to use an in-state LLC to buy a property? Uh, that's a good question, Bruce. I don't think you have to use an in-state LLC. 
So you can use a, like a Nevada-based LLC to buy a property. And ask, uh, most states have all the information and forms on the website to form a company on LLC. That is correct, Alan. So uh, yeah, you guys do that. All right, yeah, well, it is um, 8 o'clock my time. And uh, so we are going to go ahead and um, end today's um, uh, webinar. It was, uh, I had a great time of, um, you know, answering all of your questions here. I, I hope you guys had a had a great time as well. And so, um, yeah, for for those of you, like I said, you know, for those of you who are interested in the in the mentorship program, go to judios.com forward slash audio mentor to apply for that. Uh, judios.com forward slash audio mentor to apply for that. We still have a, a few slots left for you guys. And uh, let me see here. Uh, see three more questions. I'll just answer these real quick, okay? Don't submit any more questions. <laughs> now, now percentage-wise, how much do you use the MLS as a good source of audio leads? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I use the MLS 100% of the time as a good source of audio leads. Um, is that what you mean? I don't know. Uh, 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 you know. Unless the agent is giving it to us before they put it on the MLS called pre-listing, but uh, other than that, yeah, we, we only use the MLS to uh, to get all your hosts. Okay. Then let's ask uh, Tim, where do where do we get the contract for closing with the bank and the buyer? The contract between you and the bank is uh, the the bank's going to provide that, or the the agent's going to provide that. Between you and the buyer, it would be whatever your state specific contract is. So whatever your state uses between uh, uses is the same one that you're going to be using. Okay. They'll ask, uh, do you recommend a standard percentage reduction to the audio listing price to make an offer? No, I don't. Like I said, I make offers based on what I'm willing to pay for the property. It has nothing to do with the asking price. The asking price will tell me, you know, will give me an idea of how close that is to what I'm willing to pay. But I, you know, that's not a percentage. Now I'm asked, uh, besides wholesaling, do you buy and hold or not? I do have some uh, rental properties. I'm not, uh, I'm not buying any more rental properties. So I'm, I just buy and hold right now. But uh, I mean, I just buy, you know, uh, I just wholesale right now. But yeah, I do have uh, quite a bit of rental properties. Okay, Venus ask uh, Tim, but where do I get the contract? Uh, go to your. Um, you, you can ask the realtor. You know what? What is the state's uh, specific contract? Or search on the internet for whatever your state name is, real estate commission. So, like here in Texas, it would be Texas Real Estate Commission, which stands for track, and that's the uh, organization that writes our state specific contract. You can ask your realtor for that too. All right, Ted, sounds good, buddy. All right, everybody. Well, you have an awesome, awesome evening. I, uh, like I said, I totally, totally enjoy, um, you know, uh, in, in, uh, totally enjoyed doing this call with you. And I hope you have enjoyed the, the past, uh, I guess, five now, right? Five training sessions. Uh, I am thinking about another class that we're going to be doing on seller financing, and I'm still planning everything out there. Uh, but uh, but yeah, and, you know, when that is ready, you are more than welcome to sign up for that as well and to learn that as well. Okay, um, Larry said, I signed up for the mentoring implementation program. When are we going to get going? Um, my assistant Ivy probably has been trying to get a hold of you, Larry. But the class is starting tomorrow. So the uh, for for those of you who are uh, who are signing up for the uh, who have already signed up for the mentorship program or are signing up, with the class is starting tomorrow. So we'll be having our first class tomorrow. So make sure you watch an email out from Ivy uh, uh, for that, and she has been trying to schedule a time for me to talk to you. 
uh, uh, personally over the phone. And so, uh, so make sure you uh, watch out for an email on that. All righty, y'all. Well, you guys have an awesome, awesome evening, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next um, training. All right. Bye, everybody. Good luck. Have fun. Go out there and uh, make a lot of deals. Yeah, I believe in you. I know you can do it. I know you have what it takes. You are an extraordinaire. Otherwise, you wouldn't be on this uh, webinar. And so go out there. Be the extraordinaire that you are. And uh, do a lot of deals. Make me proud. Send me those testimonials. Hi, everybody. You have a great one. Bye-bye.